Hello, listeners. Welcome to Bobcats Talk, a production of Bobcat Press. Bobcat Press is a small media crew we started this year with Principal Bobcat. Meet this year's crew. Hi, I'm Blake. Hi, I'm Brina. I'm Taylor. I'm Abby. And I'm Andy. The talk today is about an amazing program the grade four or five students have participated in this year. Last month, our classes took a trip to Potter's Brook in Litchfield to release the trout we have been raising in a classroom fish tank. The day was the culmination of the Covasi Watershed Classroom to Stream program. That was the best field trip. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. 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 Right. After that day, I realized why it's called Classroom to Stream. <laughs> Today, listeners, we are going to show you how we took our classroom experience to the stream, or in this case, the brook. It all started with Tina Wood, a Marsh Speaker Garden Educator who brought this program to our school. Miss Wood is the founder of Upstream, an effort to make sure that migrating fish have a safe passage to their native home and water. Let's listen. So, Miss Wood, I have a couple questions to ask you. Uh, number one, what is your, why did you start this whole operation? What drew, drove you to do this? Um, I live on Cravice Stream, uh -huh. and one year I recognized, I heard the gulls all crying, and I'm like, what is that? Why are they doing that? And I ran down the bank, and I looked, and there were thousands of fish stopped by a dam. Wow. And I'm like, what is happening? Why is this happening? And my youngest child was with me, and they said, oh, great, another terrible thing in the world that no one will fix. And I was like, I've got to do something about this. Yeah. Um, so I just started talking to people and writing my city councilor and mayor and learning more about fish and learning how important it is for a sea-run fish to make it to where they can lay their eggs. It's an amazing sight to see many thousands of fish in the stream all trying to come upstream. So it's a cause for celebration. Dams are a huge problem for migratory fish species like alewives. It matters that the alewives can have passage to their home waters their native ancestral home to connect our oceans, our streams, rivers, bays, and lakes. The alewife is a keystone species. My name is Tina Wood, and I'm the founder of Upstream. Upstream mission is dedicated to restoring sea run fish passage on Cobbacy stream. It seems like she puts a lot of work and effort into making the world a better place. Yeah. She does. Ms. Mm -hmm. Wood reached out to Cammie Wilbert, the educator for the Friends of Cobbacy Watershed, and asked her to bring the trail program to our school. Unlike the alewives Ms. Wood mentions in the clip, the brook trout we raised are cold water fish. Through the classroom to stream program, Miss Wood and Miss Cammie wanted to, us to understand what species need for survival and growth. Clean water, a vital food web, buffers to keep pollutants out, and trees to shade their brooks and streams. We have had a great time learning with Miss Wilbert. What are three main things that you want us to know about each fish before you lose them? Well, I want you to know how important it is to keep them healthy, um, how important it is about the non-point source pollution. You know, we have the oil and gas and pesticides and fertilizers and pet waste and dirt that run off into the water that they can impact the brook trout population because they need cold, clear, cold, clear water. I um, also want you to know about the base of aquatic plants and how the macroinvertebrates, if there's not enough macros in the stream or if it's an unhealthy stream, your brook trout wouldn't survive. And where did you all experience to teach kids about brook trout? Um, this is actually um, 
something I started like four years ago, so I'm still learning as I'm going along, but I've worked with the main department of inland fisheries and wildlife, I've worked with Trout Unlimited, um, and they've really been instrumental in teaching me what I need to know about the brook trout, so I've been learning from other people too. Yeah. How long have you been working with I have been working for the Friends of Cops Watershed since 2014. Wow, so that's like seven years? Eight? Eight years now, yep. Yeah. We did six hands-on lessons with Cami in the classroom and then took our learning to the brook. The first lesson, What is a Watershed, taught us that bodies of water are all connected to each other. The main body of water is called a seat lake. Its watershed includes many land areas and bodies of water. In the next lesson, we learn about different kinds of pollutants and how to keep them from getting to a watershed. I was surprised to learn how many of our daily activities can lead to pollution. Trash, oil from the lawnmower, fertilizer, and animal waste. Some of us saw firsthand that pol the pollutants that humans too often leave behind when we helped with the great Cobbacy cleanup. I was there with Blake, Miss Burke, Miss Cass, and some other students. And together we picked up 76 pounds of human garbage and kept it from polluting that beautiful lake. Did you know that Miss Wood organized that whole day? I know, she's amazing. I don't know how she does all the things she does. It's like there are 10 of her. It was pretty amazing that Miss Burke and Miss Cass were there on their day off too. In the classroom with Miss Cammy, we learned that buffers in the landscape keep some pollutants from getting into the water. What was that word for the best kind of buffer per pervious? It means something that in a landscape that lets water through but catches pollutants. Here's a quiz, listeners. What do you think makes the best buffer for pollutants? A, bushes, trees, and shrubs. B, grass and soil. Or C, pavement. The answer is A, bushes, trees, and shrubs. At Potter's Brook last month, we went from classroom to stream with these lessons. Our guide, Tom, told us that all the trees and shrubs on the bank of Potter's Brook are an excellent buffer. Did you notice the house is just up over that bank? Yeah. Yeah, and the road is right nearby. But a good buffer keeps some of the pollution from entering the water. I can see why people hug trees. They are the of water. But we learned from Miss Cammy that invasive plants and animals are not friends of water. Most people in Maine have heard of milfoil. Like other invasive plants, milfoil is not native to Maine, and it can quickly choke out helpful aquatic plants and animals and destroy bodies of water. Yes, and unfortunately, milfoil and other invasive plants have been spotted in Cobbacy Lake. Many invasive plants are already in me. And invasive fauna. And invasive flora. And invasive algae. And once they're here, it's extremely hard to get rid of them. But it's not all bad news, listeners. Through education programs like the one we participated in, and through the efforts of so many volunteers, our waters are not as bad as they could be. Many conservation organizations employ courtesy boat inspectors to keep invasive plants from being carried on to boats and other, to other waters. Divers remove plants by hand and suction them up. The Friends of Cobbacy Watershed even has, has a youth plant patrol to find these invasive species. Still, it takes a huge amount of time and effort. And caring. Yes, and caring to keep invasive plants and animals out of our main waters. In another lesson, we learn about the helpful species that we see when our water is healthy, background vertebrates. I had no idea there are so many creatures in our waters. Andy, can you explain to us, to our listeners, why background vertebrates are so important to us? Absolutely. <laughs> Macro vertebrates, or macros, are the are the young larvae of the bugs we know, like caddisflies, black flies, and dragonflies. Macros 
live in the water until they hatch and begin flying around the water. Macros can tell us a lot about the quality of the water. These macros are found in cold, clean water. These ones are found in warm, polluted water. Their presence tells us that the body of water they're in is polluted. Thank you, Andy. I also asked Miss Wood what your favorite macro and vertebrate is. What is your favorite macro and you ever Well, I love the stonefly myth mm -hmm. because the dragonfly. It's so different. It's so different. How can you go from the crawling bug to this beautiful flying insect? That just makes me see how amazing our world is. We took the lesson about macro and vertebrates from classroom to stream at Potter's Brook. Before we could release the trout into the brook, we checked for macros that told us the water was cold and clean. Luckily, because of that buffer, Potter's Brook is a very healthy place for our trout to start their lives. When we put rocks from the brook in tubs of water, we found many macros that live best in water that's good for our trout. We compared our specimens on to pictures on a chart. I used to think bugs in the water were all just gross, but now I will look at them through a scientist's eyes. But there are still so many dangers to our baby fish, as we learned in the Brook Trout Survival Lesson. Growing up in our beloved Maine, it seems like water and fish has always been here to enjoy, but we've learned that isn't necessarily true. In the classroom, we played a game that showed all the things that can threaten a Brook Trout's life. Some of these threats are natural, like predators and weak genetics. Others are human-caused, like pollution, machinery, and even recreation, like fishing. We took this classroom lesson to the stream at Potter's Brook. One of the four stations we went through were, was a game in which we were fish trying to fight for our lives. Trying to swim through turbine, predators, and anglers. It was not easy and we had to adapt our strategies to live, just like real fish do. I'm sure the fish don't think it's as much fun as we did. No. I really enjoyed learning to tie flies, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. That was you, Bruno. Yeah. Oh, it is. Speaking no. about um, tying flies, when a couple years ago, I actually went tie flying at Swan Island that most manners might recognize. That was awesome. I've never been fly fishing before, but now I really want to go. The fish friends we made were fun too. A little art skill called science. In the 2018 YouTube video upstream, Miss Wood talks about the importance of art. And it's hard for people to be excited about fish because it's hard to see them. And art is such a good way to see something as powerful as migration. And we painted fish, we hunt fish all through our town. So, our fish prints were part of this effort to get us and others interested. There was writing too. I got a little sad writing my first. My farewell letter to my fish. Me too. What did you write? I wrote, I hope you don't die, first of all, because I want them to live to be full grown fish. And I also wrote, um, never fall for fake bait, because obviously it happens a lot. And, um, well, obviously it happens a lot, like fishing, because it's pretty big in Maine. And just stuff to be aware of and stuff like that. I heard a lot of classmates writing, I hope you don't die. You were the first one, Andy. Of course, some of our trout won't make it, but at least we know it won't be because of poor water quality. We raised the fish in a classroom tank from eggs. We had to test and change the water frequently to keep it cold and clean. Cammy said we had done well. I think it's going great. I think all the fish tanks are doing wonderful. The fish are healthy. Um, we're going to see if they have any two headed fish going on in here, but so far, so good. After all the classroom lessons, the months of watch, watching the fish grow from eggs to albins, changing the water in the tank, testing the pH, 
It was finally time last week to literally take the classroom to stream. How did you feel when you were... When you released your fish, I actually got a little emotional, Me. mostly because I named mine. Me too. I wonder where they are now. taking the journey from classroom to stream with us. Our hope is that we have inspired you to help keep our waters clean and healthy. We'd like to thank Tina Wood, Cammie Wilbert, our teacher, Miss Burke, Mr. Libby, Mr. Kendrick, and Miss Garapy, and all the volunteers at Potter's Brook who made our experience possible. Until next time, listeners, we wish you fun in Maine's great outdoors. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in to our first Bobcats Talk episode. See you next time! Cut. That's a wrap. Woo! Read it. Oh, okay. Stop. Bye, Brina. Bye, Blake. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.